Good afternoon. I'm going to be in the kitchen by popular demand. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing cheese straws again. Several people said to me after seeing the picture of cheese straws on our Instagram feed and our Facebook group, Planet Vegetaria, several people said, will you do a video? And I sort of said, no, because I don't want to make any more, you know, calories, all of that. It's only something that I tend to make at Christmas and New Year, along with shortbread. Um, but I thought, you know what? A few people have asked, why not do it again? I'm not going to make a full batch. I'll tell you why later. But I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you the method. It's really quite easy. There is a little bit of skill involved with doing it. You've got the rubbing in method, which is used to make pastry and crumbles. And you have to be careful not to overwork the dough or you will end up with very solid cheese straws. And you don't want really solid ones. You want flaky, light ones. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so let's go into the kitchen and get it sorted. You can probably hear in the background that the oven is on and I've put it to 220 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit. You'll have to convert it, but it's a good hot oven. It needs to be preheated properly before you put the cheese straws in so they cook really quickly. So ingredients wise, it's really, really simple. 100 grams of cubed butter. Now it's cold butter. This is going to come slowly up to room temperature, but you really need it to be cold and it must be cubed. I actually got this out of the freezer and cubed it frozen with a big sharp knife. That's how I like it. And I do find that cold butter makes the best pastry and you'll see why in a moment. So 100 grams of cold butter. The cheese is cheddar cheese, normal cheddar cheese, 150 grams grated, not finely grated. This is the sort of large grating section on your grater. And then we've got 200 grams of plain flour and I've got a splash of cold water in a jug. Equipment wise, I've got a nice glass mixing bowl and a rolling pin. And over the other side of the kitchen, I've got a, a chopping board. It's a marble board, ideal for pastry rolling because it stays cold, lightly floured, a knife ready to cut them out when I've rolled them. And next to that, I've got a baking sheet, which I've put some baking parchment onto. I've not greased it, doesn't need greasing. Okay, so the first thing to do is to wash your hands really thoroughly and run them under a cold tap, get them cold. This is the rubbing in method. And if you've watched our video, I think it was uh, how to make a crumble on our uh, childhood dessert video. Um, the rubbing in method is used to make pastry, crumbles, cheese straws. If you've never done it before, it does require a little bit of skill and it's a way of combining the ingredients by hand to a fine breadcrumb stage. So I'm gonna pop the flour in. I'm gonna hope that you can see this okay. I'm sort of monitoring it. The cheese goes in and pop your butter in. Yeah, it's still cold, that butter. First thing you're gonna do is just take, put your hand in, just gently combine it just so the cold butter is coated. Now the aim with rubbing in is to use the fingertips. You don't really want the whole hand to be coated in the mixture. And go in with both hands and just gently start by rubbing. That's all you're doing. You're rubbing the fats together with the flour. I'm lifting my hands up like this to show you, but really you'd be doing it like this, hands down, just lifting the ingredients up. It's gonna take some time because the butter is cold, but you, you really want the butter to turn into 
I guess, grains of butter, like breadcrumbs of butter. You can see the butter is starting to flatten. But you don't really want it to melt. So what I'm saying is the the pastry that we end up with won't be too hot and overworked. So I'm just going to continue. Oh, whoops. I'm going to continue to do that. Can be a slightly messy job. And like I say, my hands would normally be like this, but I'm doing this to show you. And you'll find the cheese is starting to combine with the flour as well. And this will take you, with very cold butter, it's going to take you probably a good five to ten minutes max to do. There's no other way to really do this. It has to be done by hand. And like I said before, this is called the rubbing in method and it's an essential skill when you're learning cookery. We learn to do this at school. And notice I'm, I'm not sort of standing there doing this. I'm lifting. Because you also want to incorporate air. You want the cheese straws to be light and crisp. You don't want them to be a, a heavy doughy biscuit you want them to be crisp and light and you will notice once they've been cooked that they are slightly flaky and that flakiness depends on the butter not being completely and utterly melted away and we're starting to get to a sort of bread crummy consistency but it is going to take a little bit longer because we've still got large lumps of butter. And it's still cold. This mixture still feels cold. The cheese is really starting to rub in now. Always think to yourself, don't overwork it. But it will be the natural heat of your hands that start to melt the butter down a little bit more. It's almost like a, it's going to be a, a sort of crumbly blend of fat and flour. You can see it coming to breadcrumbs already. I can still feel quite a few bits of butter you can see there. They do need to be combined. What I'll probably do is fast forward this bit to the breadcrumb stage. Okay, we're almost there. I mean, you can see it does look like breadcrumbs. There are hardly any large lumps left. It's really, that's, that's kind of where we want to get to. If you overwork it, um, the butter will really start to melt and it will start to look too combined and it won't have a flakiness to it. So my hands are still coated because we are going to be bringing this together. Again, the word I'm saying to you, do not overwork it. So the first thing you do in bringing it together is give it a test. See if it will come together. Yeah, it's sort of coming together sort of quite well, but what I tend to do is add a splash of cold water. Got a little bit of cold water in here, just a splash. 
use your knife at this stage just to bring that water in. Please don't start saying to me that it's unlucky to stir with a knife because this is how you do pastry. This is how the this is how I was taught. That's how all the women in my family who used to cook pastry used to start the dough. It just enables you to get in there without overworking it. Okay. I think that should be good. Start bringing it together. Very gently. I'm just seeing how it feels. There is no kneading. No kneading at all. You're just bringing it together. Gathering up. If you feel maybe that's a little dry, you could add a little bit more water. And what you could do is take your knife and break it up again. But if you put your knife into it and you think that's sort of holding together quite well, it should be fine for rolling. Okay, rolling out. I'm starting with half of the dough. I've got my rolling pin. And what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of flour on that. Just a little bit. a centimetre thick or thereabouts you don't want them too thick you want them to be crisp and light you might also notice a sort of marbling where the bits of cheese have been incorporated which is a good sign okay we're going to cut them out you can cut whatever shape you want, but I tend to go for some lengths. You might want to be neat with your ends, I don't tend to worry too much kind of like quite a, a rustic look. And they're kind of, I guess, two centimeters wide. You can do whatever width you want, but I find this is ideal for cooking. So pop them onto your baking sheet. Don't worry too much about spacing because they don't spread particularly. The great thing about them is they only take about nine minutes to cook. So let's get these into the oven. 220 degrees C for approximately nine minutes. Fan oven, by the way. Okay, so it's been about nine minutes. So I'm gonna take them out of the oven. There we go, cheese straws. They look good. So 
So let them cool down. That won't take very long and then you can enjoy this cheese extravaganza. <laughs> they are delicious, I have to say. They are fantastic and these look particularly good. They've really gone golden and luscious. Mmm, very pleased with those. Now, just to say, I've only made one batch because after all, Christmas and New Year's just gone and we've just had a batch and they are calorific. So what I'm going to do is freeze the dough and that should be fine and then I'll know I've always got some dough in and I can knock up a batch whenever I want some. So there we have it. Very, very, very easy recipe to make. The only part of it that you've got to be careful with is the rubbing in and the bringing together of the dough. Don't overwork it, because otherwise you won't end up with these gorgeous treats. Paul, join me for a cheese straw in the dining room. <laughs> So we've been eating cheese straws all Christmas and New Year. So Paul, these are fresh. These are lovely. Mm. They're crisp. Buttery. Flaky. Cheesy. Because I didn't overwork them. Glorious. Yummy. It's almost like a flaky pastry. Well it is, isn't it? Isn't it? It's like a rough puff. Yeah. Cheesy mm. rough puff. Mm. We all like a bit of cheesy rough mm. puff. Paul. So thank you very much for watching. And all that remains for us to say is we wish all of our followers, subscribers, and people on social media everywhere a very, very happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Mm. You've they two. are fabulous. You've had two already. No, I haven't had two. I just made sure that I did have you two. You just breathed one of them in, didn't you, Paul? Mm. Mm. They're they delicious. are glorious. So, happy baking. But even... these are nice and warm, aren't they? Well, they're just warm. Mm. 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 Oh. <laughs> these are really, really good. I think we should go for an evening walk burn the calories off. We went for a morning walk. I know. I've done work at the allotment this afternoon. But look at what we've just eaten. So you can go for a walk on mm. your own. They are divine. Mm. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year. Bye. Take care. Bye. Mm.